Hi, everybody. My name is Ivan Lavandera from the University of Oviedo in Spain, and I welcome you to module 2.2 from the basic unit called Selectivity in Enzyme Catalyzed Processes. I hope you will enjoy it. Without any doubt, the capacity to selectively modify organic molecules is one of the features that make enzymes so special compared to other chemical catalysts. Among the different types of selectivities that enzymes can perform, it can be highlighted chemoselectivity, which is the ability to differentiate two or more reactive groups but with similar reactivity against another reagent. Regioselectivity, which stands for the selective transformation of a chemical reagent with one of two or more identical uh, functional groups. And finally, stereoselectivity, which is related to the different reactivity of one stereoisomer with regards to others. If this occurs between two enantiomers, this phenomenon is called enantioselectivity. And if it happens between different diastereoisomers, it is called diastereoselectivity. Special stereoselectivity is extremely important since it is well known since decades that each enantiomer of a racemic mixture can produce different biological effects in living organisms, which could be both beneficial, as in the case of propanolol. One can be desirable while the other one can be innocuous, as in the case of lilial. But in the worst case, one can be beneficial while the other one can be very harmful as in the well-studied case of thalidomide. There are different approaches to synthesize enantiol-rich compounds using enzymes. Since they have a three-dimensional chiral structure, they can differentiate racemates through a kinetic resolution process, since both compound enantiomers can react on unequal reaction rates in the presence of the biocatalyst. Thus, in the example, while well, substrate enantiomer A will selectively form product P, substrate enantiomer B will remain unpotched, and in the best case, this mixture of P and B will be separated. As typical biocatalytic samples, hydrolysis can selectively acylate racemic secondary alcohols forming a single ester enantiomer, or transferases can selectively deaminate an amine enantiomer to the corresponding ketone, leaving in touch the other amine enantiomer. If both enantiomers of a racemic mixture can react with the enzyme by yielding two different products, ideally in enantiopure form and which can be easily separated, the biocatalyst is mediated in a parallel kinetic resolution. In this example, P and Q are not enantiomers but different compounds. These previous systems have the disadvantage of providing an antipur products in up to 50% isolated yield in the best case. Therefore, strategies that can provide up to 100% of a final enantiomer rich products are appealing. For instance, if a molecule is prochiral, this is, contains a symmetry element, as occurs in the case of meso compounds of derivatives having a double bonding structures, Enzymes can remove these symmetry elements of form, affording a single enantiomer rich product, which is called desymmetrization. Examples of biocatalytic desymmetrizations are the bioreductions of prochiral ketones or alkenes by the action of oxidoreductases. But can we get quantitatively an enantiomer pure single product starting from a racemate? The answer is yes. One way for achieving this is coupling a kinetic resolution process with the racemization of the slow reacting enantiomer, converted it into the other substrate enantiomer, which can ideally afford the final product at 100%. In the example, a slow reacting substrate enantiomer B is transformed into the fastest one A which after reaction with the biocatalyst renders an antiomer product P. These systems are called dynamic kinetic resolutions. 
Examples of these transformations are the combination of a hydrolase with a metal catalyst to transform a racemic alcohol into a single ester enantiomer product, or the action of a transferase in the presence of a base to access diesteromedically pure amines from racemic alpha-substituted ketones. The conversion of a racemate into a pure enantiomer or into a mixture in which one enantiomer is present in exyl is called deracemization. In this field, several strategies have been followed to achieve this type of transformation. Thus, starting from a racemic mixture, a non-selective transformation, which transforms both enantiomers into an intermediate I, can be coupled with an enzyme to give selectively back one of the substrate enantiomers, in this case, A, ideally at 100%. On the other hand, we can also perform deracemization of a racemic substrate if we combine a selective transformation at a force an intermediate I, in this case from enantiomer A, plus non-reactive enantiomer B, and a second enzymatic reaction that can selectively give back substrate enantiomer B, thus finally obtaining up to 100% of this enantiomer. A third type of deracemization can occur if to a first selective enzymatic transformation and modifies just enantiomer A into uh, intermediate I. A second non-selective reaction is coupled, giving back both substrate enantiomers at similar rates. If this system works during enough cycles, substrate uh, enantiomer A will slowly be transformed into an antiomer B within the time. This particular system is called cyclic deracemization. Examples of deracemizations are, for instance, the transformation of an alcohol racemate into a single enantiomer by combining a non-selective bio or chemical catalyst with a selective oxidoreductase or the transformation of a racemic amine into a single substrate enantiomer here due to the combination of a selective oxidoreductase with a non-selective reducing chemical agent. Finally, in the literature, there are examples where one of or two or more biocatalysts are able to directly transform a racemic mixture of a substrate into a single product enantiomer, while one of the substrate enantiomers, in this example A, reacts through retention of its configuration, the other enantiomer, in this case B, must react through inversion of its configuration. These processes are called enantioconvergent. So, I hope to have given you an overview of the relevance of selectivity in enzymatic processes, especially in the case of stereocontrol synthesis of organic molecules, which are nowadays central in, in different industrial sectors, such as pharma. See you! Thank you.